everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on today's Tech Talk we're going to talk all about the things that you lose when you remove an engine and I'm not talking about soul and noise, I'm talking about things like heating and power steering pump and things like that. So what do we do to basically replace all those parts that normally run off a belt off the engine? So we're going to start with heating because uh, that's probably one of the most popular ones that's a head scratcher with people trying to get their head around electric vehicles is where does the heat come from because in a petrol or diesel car there those engines are so inefficient they generate a lot of heat that essentially you can just use some of that to heat up the cabin but an electric vehicle is so efficient that there's not much heat really available to cool the cool the actual or heat the cabin with um, although having said that, there's now heat pumps in some of the most modern uh, electric vehicles. But I'm going to cover uh, the quick and simple way to essentially heat your electric vehicle conversion. And that we have to start with something like this. So for, the, uh, for those that know, you'll know this is a mini heater box. So you've got your, your fan and selector and your heat on, etc. down here. And all this is really is a heat a, a, um, a fan so you've got a blower in there you'll have an element in there which is getting water like a radiator if you like um, it's getting hot water in from the engine and it's going through and it's coming back out and this one here this is obviously not from a mini from another vehicle but it's kind of pretty easy to show you so essentially in a heater box you'll have your hot water coming in going through there and then back out there and you'll be blowing the air through that to heat it up to go into the cabin so we haven't got that because there's no inefficient, dirty old petrol engine in an electric vehicle. So what we end up doing is taking this out of a box like this and essentially replacing it with something more akin to ooh, that. So these are heater elements out of uh, OEM production vehicles and they come in many different sizes. I mean, this is a small one that we use. So this is uh, something that we buy new, for instance. So sometimes, we get second-hand ones, sometimes we buy new ones. It's all about the shape and size of the heater box that we're dealing with in each vehicle. So if I turn this around here now, you'll see we magically fitted one of these into this heater box. So this, by the looks of it, this looks like one of these. Yep, it is. So we've essentially fitted this inside there. And all it is, if you imagine a hand dryer in a washroom, essentially that's all it is. You've got a heater element there and a fan here and it's just blowing instant heat into the cabin, which is fantastic because usually in a classic vehicle, you're getting to the end of your journey and then you're starting to get warm air coming out if you've just got to work for uh, uh, or whatever. So with this, you switch it on just like a hairdryer, bang, instant heat, which is fantastic. So that in essence, is how we get electric heating in an electric converted classic car. Uh, and of some cars like the Beetle behind me, obviously they're not water cooled, so you don't have one of these. What they use is air cooled over like a heat exchanger on the exhaust. So in that uh, type of uh, vehicle, like a Porsche 911, a uh, Fiat 500, you would essentially need to build an, um, a heater box from scratch. So you'll have uh, a fan, blowing heat over the elements and then into the vehicle. So very similar sort of concept, but instead of converting an existing heater box, you have to just build one from scratch. Fairly simple. So that's it, that's heating. I think we've covered heating now. Uh, what else would be run off a belt? Um, cooling, air conditioning. So give me a minute to just wipe this table clean and we'll go from heating to cooling. Right, now it's time to talk about something really cool. <laughs> Air conditioning, sorry, that was a terrible joke. Um, so we've talked about heating. Uh, the only thing I didn't cover on heating, obviously, is uh, different electric vehicles work at different voltages. So some of those elements that I had on the table were you know, working at 75 volts. Some of them were working way up to 400 volts. Um, but essentially, they're the same kind of thing. Um, so with an air conditioning pump on a vehicle, this pump is essentially driven off a belt from the engine. And this is exactly the same principle, but all it has now internally is an electric motor. 
So one of the benefits of you know, this little system is that the fact that if a vehicle came with air conditioning in the first place, great, you keep all the rest of the uh, systems, the evaporators and everything, and you're essentially replacing the compressor with this electric motor-driven compressor. But the other thing is, a lot, of uh, a, lot, a lot of classic cars never actually came with air conditioning in the first place. So now we have a really nice opportunity to actually put air conditioning into a vehicle that never had in the first place. So, you know, these little compressors are a really uh, nice solution. It's a, it's a new uh, part, obviously. So uh, that's it. Really simple uh, uh, electric air conditioning. It does what it says on the tin. All it is, essentially, it is air conditioning compressor, but just electri electrically driven. Simple. Right, on to the next thing, uh, alternators. Let's cover alternators next. Right, I'm gonna grab another one. Right then, old fashioned alternator charging up your 12 volt battery. New fan dangled alternator charging up your 12 volt battery. So this is what's called a DC to DC converter. This is taking the high voltage be that 400 volts, 120 volts, 75 volts, whatever, and it's converting that down to 13.8 volts or whatever to charge up your 12 volt battery. So these come in various different shapes and sizes according to how many watts of power it's giving out. Same as an alternator, whether or not it's an 80 amp um, uh, alternator, or whatever. These come in various different shapes and sizes from small little rinky dink things to massive things, and it all depends upon what the load is on the 12 volt uh, battery on the vehicle. So if you've got lots of spotlights and you've got a winch and other bits and pieces on a big massive rig like a, a Land Rover, you probably have a big alternator on. Well, same goes for the DC to DC converter. You'll probably go with something like a, a 1500 watt or a 2000 watt uh, DC to DC converter. But if you've got a little small vehicle that has no power steering pump or any, you know, a small drain on your 12 volt, you can probably go with something as small as a 500 watt uh, DC to DC converter. So there you go. I've got my fingers dirty on this lumpy old messy thing. And there's your, your new 21st century version of it. So DC to DC converter charged up with 12 volt battery and that replaces the belt driven alternator on your typical ICE um, vehicle. Right, next we will do vacuum, vacuum systems. So let me go and grab one then. Right, it's time to talk about brakes. And we'll start off with this. This is a vacuum pump. And to give this some context, let me open up the bonnet on the Land Rover. Uh, there's on a lot of cars, old cars, not all of them, but a lot of old cars, they had vacuum assisted brakes. So there's a, a device here, which is on the end of the master cylinder. And what that does, there's a vacuum line going into it. So when you apply pressure with your foot on the brake pedal, this vacuum kind of helps like move that master cylinder and shift the brake fluid within the brake system to essentially close the brakes and brake the vehicle. So essentially what you need is vacuum from an engine to make this work. But take out the engine, you've lost your vacuum. So now we have a problem. We need to generate vacuum for your boosted brakes to work. And to do that, that is essentially what this is. So this is nothing more than just a electric vacuum pump. So what you've got in here is a motor that's driving uh, two little diaphragms by the looks of it on this one, and that's generating a vacuum out of here. Nice and simple. Um, we've used a number of different types over the years of vacuum pumps. Uh, some make a heck of a noise, so uh, you'll hear this and then it goes off and you'll be wondering, what was that noise? That was the vacuum pump. But we've uh, standardized on this design now. It's nice and silent. You don't get that annoying noise all the time. Um, and equally, these things only come on when the brake um, kind of comes on. So when you press the pedal and uh, the uh, vacuum is taken up by the boosted brake system, that's when this pump then comes on via a vacuum um, switch that then kind of like film, uh, fills the vacuum canister back up with vacuum again. So you'll put your foot in the uh, brake, then this will come on for a few seconds, then go off again. So. That's it, simple as that. So uh, you lose your vacuum on the engine and you replace it with something like this, which is an electric vacuum pump. 
So that's that. Now, we've started to use these a lot. And you'd probably be wondering, what on earth is this? Well, this essentially is the uh, new, improved version of a vacuum-assisted brake system. It's essentially an electric-assisted brake system. And this is an iBooster off a of Tesla. And it works on the same sort of principle. Um, uh, you've got a master cylinder there, so imagine a brake pedal pushing that piston in there. You've got your master cylinder at the back here. But in this section here is um, an electric motor system, which essentially is helping push that push rod into the master cylinder. And some sensors and uh, stuff involved here as well. Uh, this is your um, reservoir, and obviously this is quite a difficult shape to fit in a lot of our vehicles so we usually take that off and make our own little reservoir or sometimes some pipes going off to a remote reservoir but this is what we've started to use in a lot of vehicles now um, it's an eye booster as i say really nice compact system and essentially it's an electric uh, assisted brake setup rather than a electrically vacuum assisted brake setup so there we go that's pretty much the brakes sorted out. So I think next I'm gonna go and grab the um, power steering. So let's do power steering next. Right then, one of the last things that you lose when you take an engine out is your power steering pump. That's assuming it had power steering in the first place. Um, so let's cover that scenario first. So let's assume that it had power steering. Now, let me pop the bonnet on this because this vehicle had power steering uh, to start with so we would have had to have replaced that power steering pump with essentially an electric power steering system so this is a, a, a hydraulic electric power steering system and you can see it in there and again all it is and there's a there's a continuing theme going on here is it's an electrically driven pump so before that pump if you like that pump would have been driven off a belt and now there's a motor in it and essentially it's electrically driven. Uh, but apart from that, it does exactly the same function. So it's providing hydraulic fluid uh, under pressure out of here. And essentially that's going down then to your rack or your steering box to assist with your steering force when you go in that way or that way. So that is a uh, electric hydraulic power steering pump. Now, what happens when you want power steering in a vehicle that never had power steering in the first place. Well, for that, you need what's called an EPAS system, electric power assisted steering. And for that, we need to take a walk back there to my bus, because I've got one on that vehicle over there. So let's have a wander. Ooh, right then, welcome to my old bus. So what we're gonna talk about in here is this. Let me just take the cover off, otherwise there's not much to see. There we go. So this essentially is what's called an EPAS system. So it's an electrically power assisted steering. Uh, this vehicle never had power steering on it as standard, um, but uh, I wanted this, uh, which is my vehicle, to be a bit easier and practical to drive for uh, my wife, quite frankly, uh, who uses it a lot now. Um, so the steering on it is fairly stiff when it's like that. And what's going on? Um, is you've got a motor here, so there's an electric motor there, and that's going through a worm gear here onto the actual steering column, and that's providing assistance below certain speeds. So it's a speed and torque sensitive, so essentially above, I don't know what it is, probably about 10, 50 miles an hour, the actual assistance really starts to ramp down. If I grab my keys and switch this thing on, you'll see, so that's how it normally is and if I turn it on so now um, the vehicle's on you can probably hear the fans of the motor as well but more importantly the power steering is on so essentially now I can do it with one little finger and that's how an electric power assisted steering works on a vehicle that never had power steering so there you go that's uh, that one and there we go, it's now off. <laughs> um, so I think we've covered everything. Um, we've covered uh, heating, um, air conditioning, um, uh, alternator, um, vacuum systems, and power steering. So that's everything that is, you know, uh, goes in the bin along with the engine and how we essentially um, 
replace those with electric vehicle technology. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed all that. And thanks for watching, everybody. And I promise next time we will get outside and do some driving because the weather has been atrocious these past few weeks. Another storm has just gone through this weekend. And filming outside is just a no-no. Even walking outside is a no-no at the moment. But I promise we're going to do some outside driving around uh, videos in the future. So, uh, again, hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned for some driving videos next time. And I'll see you on the next one.